Bueno, por si estáis viendo esto desde YouTube, hola, hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estáis? 15 segundos y vamos a ver en qué consiste Forbidden Santo. Muchas voy gracias por ver qué tal está. A ver. Bienvenidos y a disfrutar de la presentación de la nueva Liga de Path of Exile. Parche 3.20 que comenzará el día 9 de diciembre. Hoy es día 1 y... a gozar. Se acabó el tiempo. Con la vuelta la come, no hay stream. Frostblink? Frostblink, sí. Sí, ok. Con la pechera <risa> esta de las habilidades de movimiento. Ya, pero... Es rápida, ¿eh? Qué tonto. <risa> Me hace mucha gracia, pum. A ver. Frostblink tiene bastante daño, pero es incómoda. <risa> o sea... Y al boss que tiene que hacer el 70 Frostblink encima. Fíjate que no lo enseñan boseando. Hombre, eh, sí, es para limpiar, no creo que la voces haga mucho. Claro, para voces solamente han mostrado la Warloop. Eh, mira. Hombre, con todo el efecto, mira, con todo el efecto de chill y ¿Está todo, la Frost Ring? Sí, es viable. Sí, 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 sí está sí, la está Frost Ring. Pues no le ha costado tanto, eso eh. tiene que dasear no, no, no. encima del bicho todo el rato. ¿Ah? Hola, papá. No ha costado nada. Hola, papá. Perdona, eh, Nacho. Muchísimas gracias por las 20 sub, pero tengo que quitar el bot mientras hace la presentación. Aquí solo está diciendo que si veis durante 45 minutos el stream, podéis acceder al, al drop. Solo hay que ver el stream, no muteado, nada más. Y esta es la presentación que tenemos hoy. Este es el menú. Presentación, trailer de Forbidden Santum, eh, Challenge League, nos van a enseñar los cambios al Endgame, nuevas habilidades, nuevos ítems únicos, eh, buffos a, item, a armas únicas, joyas y ailments, cambios, el rework que le han hecho, que esto de todas formas ya lo sabemos pero nos lo han estado contando en los manifiestos, cambio a las maldiciones, eh, cambio a los modificadores de Arnemesis, Rootless, que es el nuevo modo de dificultad Chris Wilson, eh, cambios al Quality of Life, a la calidad de vida, eh, los packs de support y luego hay un preguntas y respuestas. A disfrutar. Forbidden Santum. Oh. Many have met their fate here in the shade of Fel Shrine. So, step lightly. But here you are bound by new rules. My rules. Each step with gold to tempt you. A foe to wound you. A curse to spite you. But do not give up, for vast riches await the bold. Pillage this sanctum if you must, and one day you may uncover its secrets. De momento pintaza, ya está activo el drop, eh. De momento pintaza con el modo este es parecido a Heist. ¿Habéis visto el árbol que tenía como 50 sí, nodos de, está... de Abyss? Pero no era. Pero parecía sí. que no era solo Abyss. Pero se salía del. Se salía del nodo eso. O sea, no era el sí, circulito de siempre. Estaba fuera. The Forbidden Sanctum is an old Templar enclave, long rumored to be hidden beneath the Fell Shrine ruins. 
Abandoned for a long time, it is now controlled by a malevolent entity. In this league, you'll explore it, find out its secrets, and deal with the evil that lurks there. The Sanctum Challenge League is a roguelike game, played out one at a roguelike. time as you explore Rayclast and the Atlas in Path of Exile. In every area or map you enter, you can make a choice of which room in the Sanctum you will explore next. On the Sanctum map, you can see the contents of a few rooms ahead, enabling you to plot a path through its dangerous halls. And the Sanctum is dangerous. Like most roguelikes, you should not expect to be able to complete it on your first try. Getting to the deeper floors no requires experience, la primera. knowledge, and luck. You should expect that your early attempts will fail, but over time, you'll be able to push yourself farther and farther. Si As you progress deeper into the Sanctum, you'll find a variety of treasures sí. that will help you eventually find your way to the dangerous that way you'll be able to explore floors. Eventually, in the endgame, you may be able to push through all four floors to face the final boss. Es haste, pero Every road needs a resource es... to help you track how well the run is going. In the Forbidden Sanctum, it is your resolve, indicated by this bar here. Synthesis, As you explore the Sanctum, your resolve is threatened by the dangers within. When you lose all of your resolve, your Sanctum run ends. Your level of resolve is maintained between consecutive rooms on your run, but is only shown when you're in the Sanctum itself. The resolve mechanic applies equally to Hostia, all the build build muy... Your resolve Boss is reduced killer. when you are hit by monsters or environmental hazards in the Sanctum, and these telegraphed attacks Aquí are not affected no, by no regular entra. Path of Exile defensive mechanics, such as evasion, armor, or block. While these attacks do some nominal damage to your regular life, the bulk of their impact is against Mucha your gracia, resolve. No this mechanic provides a mechanism for tracking your progress between rooms, where your regular life pool would long ago have been recovered. Another aspect of the resolve system is that characters who are struggling can be ejected from the sanctum without actually having to die, monedas al matar, al abrir cofres. or hardcore death. <coughs> so maintaining a healthy level of resolve is key as you navigate the sanctum, and that means making careful choices of what rooms you enter. Let's have a look at some of the things that sanctum rooms can contain. Afflicted rooms cause you to gain an affliction when you enter them. Afflictions make your sanctum run more difficult. For example, reducing your resolve recovery, causing rewards to become hidden on the sanctum map, or causing sanctum rooms to spawn volatile anomalies that follow you. These minor afflictions accumulate as you get deeper and deeper into a run, making it more challenging. Major afflictions exist and are a big deal. They have significant consequences, such as entirely preventing the recovery of resolve. So, a Sanctum run gets harder and harder as you pick up more Hostia, afflictions. Son los de buffos de ultimatum, eh? Great. But every roguelike needs a way for you to gain power throughout your run. In the Forbidden Sanctum, that system is boons. Boons are beneficial buffs that help you as you progress through the Sanctum. Minor boons make things a little easier, such as slowing down monsters or adding a special shield to your resolve called Inspiration. Major boons don't come along often, but have large effects, such as preventing you from receiving more minor afflictions, or recovering your resolve to 50% the next time you run out. Due to the vast variety of afflictions and boons, no two runs are the same. Generally speaking, your best sanctum runs are the ones where the afflictions you choose have little effect on you, and the boons either counteract them or have a large benefit for the strategy you're running. Sentido, el de las some rooms in the sanctum contain a fountain, which will restore some of your lost resolve. Others contain afflicted fountains that restore even more resolve at a cost. Rooms with a treasure reward contain chests full of the Templar Aureus currency, a type of gold coin they used for commerce within their sanctum. You'll also find some Aureus coins from monsters that you kill as you explore. Los These are picked son up automatically, por explorar, like Azeroth, and are not matar, tradable, and like your afflictions and boons are templarios. lost when your sanctum run ends. Some rooms contain a merchant who accepts your Aureus coins in exchange for boons. Continue your purchases carefully as negociar. you may encounter the merchant again later on with even more expensive boons to purchase. Occasionally, Hostia. the sinister powers controlling the Sanctum will present you with a choice of making an accursed pact. You are given several pacts to choose from and can even opt to take all that you are offered. All pacts have a big upside and a big downside, such as exchanging a portion of your maximum resolve for a random major boon. It's very dangerous to make a pact, but if you pick the right circumstances, your gamble could pay off. In addition to rewards that help you progress through the Sanctum, many rooms let you immediately receive Path of Exile currency items, but with a twist. 
Whenever you're offered some currency items that you can receive right away, you are also offered a more valuable option that will be waiting for you after the boss fight at the end of the current floor of the same time. If you fail run before you reach and defeat the boss, you will not receive the reward you picked. No recibes la recompensa a no ser que lo completes. You're offered the temptation of getting a massive currency reward that is conditional on completing your entire Yes, en plan, vas todo el rato consiguiendo aerus o monedas de estas para poder comprar buffos durante el camino. You will discover a special altar that Templar relics can be placed on. These relics directly affect your Sanctum runs Esto and are haste. not lost when a run ends. They persist es throughout haste. the league Mas as a permanent source ultimado. of meta progression. Acquiring new and better relics is one of the ways you can push farther and farther with each run you try. Relics cannot be crafted and cannot be traded, as they represent your personal progression throughout the league. Las reliquias son tuyas, son del modo historia, son intransferibles e incrasteables. Las consigues en base a tu avance. You can store your extra relics in the relic locker, a free storage space like the expedition locker. We don't want to spoil important story details, but the end boss of the Forbidden Sanctum can drop unique items from a pool exclusive to this league. Today we'd like to show you a unique amulet for oh, eternal damnation. Hostia, lo del final de todo. Dice, no queremos spoilear como de importante es terminar la historia. The concept of elemental damage reduction. Despite the drawback of reducing your maximum resistances, if you have sufficient chaos resistance, this is more than compensated for. Es el cubo de Kanai. Because of the roguelike nature of the Forbidden Sanctum, defeating the boss of a este floor is a difficult achievement and hence rewards a lot of experience. You may fail on the way, so if you do manage it, expect a good experience boost for your achievement. Tira piroclast mines. Tira el... Tira Another one you can find is a special type of relic called a sanctified relic that has mods that directly affect your character's build. You can only unlock one slot for this type of relic, and while these relics can't be crafted through conventional means, you may find special reward rooms in the sanctum that can modify them. These relics exist for this league only and provide a boost to character power for players who are able to master the sanctum. The Sanctum League offers a roguelike experience that tempts you into taking risks and rewards you if those pay off. O sea, quieren que usemos las manos, hijos de puta. Can't wait to hear about your experiences next week. Se ve súper bien. En oh, hay que hacer una muy tanque. Y esto es pareja con Fox. We're improving Path of Exile with new content to explore yeah. and improvements to how you customize your endgame experience. Los dos compartimos el mismo uno con parte del otro. We're revamping the Atlas Tree, reworking how vale, Ultra cambias al endgame. Function, and are introducing two Genéricos, no tienen nada que ver con la liga. The Atlas tree is generally working really well, but has a few problems we'd like to address. The tree offers you the ability to specialize in killing pinnacle bosses, providing extra rewards when you do so. While this sounds good on paper, it creates a situation where you're incentivized to specialize your tree for regular mapping, save up all of your boss fights, then respec fully into boss mode, and then do all of your saved up boss fights before specking back again. Ideally, the design of the Atlas tree would let you spec into one build and then just play the game. We have removed all boss bonuses from the Atlas tree and have baked some of them into the actual base properties of the boss fights. For example, you don't need to allocate the gaze into the abyss notable that makes the elder more likely to drop a watcher's eye, as he just has that drop chance built in now. The Atlas tree is now focused on allowing you to specialize into content that you encounter in every map. We also Hostia. want you to be able to specialize into your favorite leagues even more deeply on the Atlas tree. For each of the 10 sí. leagues that the tree lets you disable, Bastante we've added a bunch more passives to the tree. Vale. These new passives allow you to Podemos especializar mucho más el contenido de la liga. No quieren que gastemos puntos del Atlas de, en, en los Pinnacle Bosses. We are making a number of changes uh. to Eldritch Altars that mostly affect their rewards, but will also affect gameplay decisions you make involving them. Some of the key changes include splitting up the basic currency, scarab, and divination card rewards to be explicit in their description of what rewards you'll get. For example, instead of map bosses dropping three unknown basic currency items, Sí, ya dijeron que van a ser mucho más concretos. As part of this change, we've removed some of the lower value yet quite common currency rewards from the pool, <coughs> such as orbs. Esto es para nivel 14 en plus de mapas. Speaking of scarabs, these will be less available from altars, but we've increased their availability from the normal. Son drop base. Rusted scarabs can now drop from the core drop pool, and we've added a vendor recipe that allows you to upgrade your scarabs. Nueva receta de escarabajos. Using the normal three to one ratio. You can also perform this action from your fragment tab using the new upgrade button. 
Eh, lo explicaremos todo con muchísimo detalle ahora, tranquilo. No a leer nada, Vamos a explicar todo, ¿eh? lo vamos a destrozar, a descuartizar. Si run maps influenced by, say, Eater of Worlds, you'll see divine orbs from the basic currency reward more than twice as often as before. Necesitas nueve rústes para un builder. So the that boss También de la frecuencia de la que caiga. Los guilders de Javali han poco. Sí, pero hay una receta Previously, que te lo cambia por el guilder bueno. A este ya lo sabemos. Grazo de Cosmos lo han modificado. Todo esto ya lo hemos hablado. You can now also get awakened gems from defeating Maven Witness map bosses. This additional reward helps further balance the expected returns from the various types of rewards. Ah, cuando no gema, agua que no. For more detail on these changes, check out the balance manifesto we posted last week, or the upcoming. Un bosque normal y corriente de mapas ya suelta gemas agua que no. In the Lake of Calandra expansion, we introduced Atlas memories. When applied to your atlas, they unlock a sequence of maps that tells the story of an NPC's past. These stories manifest as specialized encounters that involve a new challenge and exciting rewards. In this expansion, we've introduced two buena, memories, de buena, de describing de events related to beastry and domination. The beastry memory line allows you to capture harvest monsters as beasts for your menagerie. These harvest beasts can be used in nine new beast crafting recipes. These recipes cover an array of options. No for recetas. Example, you can remove one of the special modifiers from a watcher's eye jewel and then add another. This gave <laughs> potent <laughs> results. Para que los monstruos Ah, un nuevo shrine. This Atlas memory introduces a new set of shrines with specialized buffs, guarded by rare monsters that drop tantalizing rewards. The Forbidden Sanctum expansion introduces a new type of shards that drop from harbingers. Nuevas memorias con unos drops loquísimos. No da currency. Which behaves the same as a fracturing craft from harvest. It can be used on any rare item with at least four modifiers. When the orb is applied, it locks one of the modifiers in place so that further Pone que fractura cuatro. No, fractura Para que no sepa qué es fracturar, te coge un modificador y te lo vuelve inamovible. Hace que luego puedas craftear encima de él sin que se cambie nunca. Creo que lo ha movido a Harvey, que, que es tira fracturing Ya sabemos entonces por qué Harbinger está donde está. The Forbidden Sanctum expansion introduces a number of new skill gems. Lo vamos a explicar todo ahora, ¿eh? Si alguien tiene dudas, tranquilos. Lo vamos a explicar todo. There are two totally new skills that we'd like to unveil today. Volcanic <coughs> Fisher is a new fiery slam skill that can be used with staves, slam. maces, axes, and unarmed attacks. Strike the ground right. to create a chasm that winds towards your target. This chasm can path around corners before erupting as the Fisher gets as close as it can reach. It releases a burst of fiery projectiles that explode on striking the ground. Enemies hit by multiple impacts will take a lot of stacked damage. Use it up close for reliable bursts of damage or aim far away. Si esto es un molten en esta rango. Ha dicho, ha dicho que puede hacer un spell, summoning a ring of icy statues that attack with your own weapon damage. The skill has multiple esto es Rift con all cooldown uses at once. La habilidad esta que hacía que se relanzase, ¿no? Cooldown. The statues perform a sweeping ice slash and these sweeps can overlap, resulting in multiple hits against targets close to you. The spell can be used with staves, maces and axes. The skill is particularly powerful with slow, heavy weapons, as while the statues will use your attack speed, you should instead prioritize the spell's own cast time and cooldown. This expansion also bonita. introduces many new Val melee skills. As you know, equipping a Val skill gem grants you both the Val and regular version of the skill. As you kill enemies, the gem charges up with their souls, and after a certain number are collected, the Val skill can be used once. Most of the new Val skills introduced in this expansion are melee skills, and this results in an indirect buff to any melee builds that use one of these skills. Where previously you'd just be using your melee skill to kill enemies, you now get to periodically use a super-powered version of the skill. If you like Flicker Strike, you'll love Val Flicker Strike, as it really dials up the concept of letting fate take the wheel. Hostias! Val Flicker Strike causes you to flicker dozens Flicker of extra strike, gente. slashing enemies. 
during this time, Mal. you don't deal any damage Mal. to the enemies you slay. Ay, rico! Vulnerable due to not leeching or generating. Ya tengo que voy a jugar esta liga. When you finish flicking, if you survived, of course, you'll be rewarded with a single huge hit damage wobble. against each enemy you slashed. Val Cleave is a new Val. No lo he entendido. Creo que pega, pero no hace daño. Exacto. No hace daño. Pero si sobrevives a la, al último golpe, eh, detonas todos los golpes. Ahí está. Están hablando gente de que han hecho que las habilidades melee, que algunas habilidades melee tengan una versión Baal. Por ejemplo, Cliff, cuando golpeas y activas la versión Baal, la misma habilidad se convierte en que tiene mucho más rango y tiene una versión como super potenciada. Y Flicker lo mismo. Flicker extra que tú la estás lanzando no hace daño cuando golpea, pero si sobrevives al, a la onda, eh, a los golpes, la puedes detonar. Es una forma de potenciar las habilidades melee. Mucho tiene que ser la diferencia. Mucho tiene que ser la diferencia. El jefe de Sanctum de Path of Exile's Pinnacle Bosses. I'd like to show you three examples of these designed sí, by winners of our la escena de anime. Pasas por el delante de todos, paras, Progenesis están todos bien y de pronto aparecen todos cortados por la mitad. Ben, and drops from the Uber Maven. It's a defensive flask that grants a mini version of the petrified blood effect, Ooh. but without requiring Ooh. you to be on low life. This is a useful tool to prevent you getting one shot by large amounts of incoming damage in scary situations. Rational Doctrine is a unique jewel that was designed by Rawlings and drops from Uber Venarius. By manipulating your attributes, you can change how this jewel behaves. While the ideal dream outcome is that you manage to get your strength and intelligence tied for highest, enabling both of the benefits simultaneously, mm -hmm. The jewel is still very powerful if it only grants your choice of permanent consecrated ground or permanent profane ground. Entropic Devastation is a pair of unique gloves that were designed by Gucci Pradas and dropped from the Uber Shaper. Currently, the ways to get spell impale are very limited. These gloves provide the powerful property of causing all of your spells to impale on crit. So let's uh -huh. talk about unique What? weapons, yeah. specifically endgame unique weapons. In many ways, the weapon is the most iconic and important item on a character, so it's very important that we make them exciting and worthy of their unique status. While some <clears throat> unique weapons have special properties that enable entirely new builds, others are best compared to powerful rare items as a primary source of the character's damage. Parado, no? We eh, have to be very sí. careful when pitching the power no. level of these unique weapons. Bueno, Como mínimo es una, es una no, no, si no, 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 But if they're too powerful, then they discourage entire archetypes of golpe, characters from trying to find or craft rare que weapons. Así que sí, Interestingly, the above todo. problem doesn't apply to belts. Despite Mageblood and Headhunter both existing as extremely powerful unique items, people still craft plenty of rare belts. That's because Mageblood and Headhunter are extremely rare, and people don't actually expect they'll reliably get one in a league. Players tend to treat them as luxury upgrades to their build, rather than something they're certain to get. In this expansion, we're promoting 10 iconic but underused unique weapons to the same tier of rarity as Mageblood and Headhunter. We are buffing them a gigantic amount and are making them incredibly hard to find. Remember when Starforge used to be an exciting ha dicho item? Well, que las ha bufado para que tenga la misma rareza que el Headhunter. Ha cambiado de... Que 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 ha cambiado de... Over the next week, we'll reveal the other unique weapons that have been massively buffed. Vale. Para que no lo sepa, está queriendo que Headhunter y Midworld no sean los únicos hiper items de Endgame. Y están siendo algunos que han bufado. Los han hecho más raros, menos comunes, pero no imposibles. No hay problema. No hay problema. Es son bufos muy gordos. Forbidden eh? Sanctum expansion, we have made jewels a better source of ailment mitigation by buffing the values of ailment focus jewel modifiers. Bleeding? Si está que has dos ya es inmune al bleeding. Mitigation to a wider variety of ailments than before. We have also removed some ailment mitigation modifiers that were only available on jewels through corruption because there are now better options through the regular jewel mod pool. This also means that other desirable corruption modifiers like immunity to corruption blood, are more likely to roll. We want the moment of finding a unique jewel to be way more exciting than it currently is. We've added a handful of new, very powerful unique jewels and have removed some old, less interesting ones. La posibilidad de que one of these tú te quitas solo las cosas de Ignite y se aplica a todos los elementos de Ignite. Elements Algo parecido a If you're able to substantially Point of Elements the en versión gema única, then you can use Fire Song to basically shrug Esta off any element of the veces, no Ahora sí. For full information about the other changes to unique jewels, check out the Balance Manifesto post we made recently. Haz de vías un 100% de reducción de posibilidad de que te de evadir el Ignite, te pones esa gema y eres inmune a todos los ailes. Te cuesta tres juegos de, de joya. 
To replace the Doomsday Keystone passive, we have brought back a version of an iconic curse-related keystone from the past. We've introduced vale, some powerful infinitas, new unique eh? items that interact with the Hexes, which will reveal in the lead up to launch. launch. Un anillo que hace que puedas meter tantas maldiciones como cargas lleves. Check out the recently, or the patch notes that will come out Hostia. after the live stream concludes. Es muy When bueno el anillo ese. When we first created the Nemesis sí. monster mod system, our goal was to improve Path of Exile's outdated set of monster mods with new Vale, Arne Nemesis, lleva tocando la moral desde enero. Lo han cambiado. Arne Nemesis did introduce a lot of interesting mechanics, but it unfortunately had several of its own problems. We have replaced Arch Nemesis with a system that is more similar to the way monster mods worked in the past. The new monster mods are a lot simpler. They now each do one Lo thing and very clearly state what they do. Each encounter with a rare monster is now less Haste complex and is easier to understand resistant. in the heat of combat compared to Arch Nemesis. Simple. You'll still encounter challenging combinations of monsters from time to time, but this emergent synergy sí, will extra be rarer than it was in Arch Nemesis. Nemesis. The goal is that combat is interesting and varied, with moments that get your heart racing, or without the frustrations of the Arch Nemesis system. Let's talk about rewards. Under Arch Nemesis, it often felt mandatory to bring in a magic find culling character to kill some monsters vale, and to maximize your rewards. Antes de Arnemesis, en Magic Find podía o no llevarlo, pero bueno, con Arnemesis y al meter a los goblins, se volvió súper importante llevar Magic Find. The specific mod, so you don't know what kind of rewards you will get until you kill the monster. Rare monsters with more mods are more likely to have these special hidden reward bonuses. To find out more about other balance changes that are taking place in the Forbidden Sanctum, check out the patch notes which will be available when the live stream ends. Over the last vale. year or so, some of our senior developers Rootless. have been tinkering with a more challenging way to play Path of Exile. We've been publicly alpha testing this mode, known as Ruthless, for the last <coughs> month, and are planning to make it available to anyone who's interested alongside the launch of the Forbidden Sanctum next week. Ruthless is an optional additional character flag, like Hardcore or Solo Cell Found, that completely changes how Path of Exile feels to play. Ruthless is a lot more difficult than regular Path of Exile. Es mucho más difícil que el Path of Exile normal. To kill. It instead focuses on reducing character power through extreme item scarcity, limited crafting, and many other changes, such as support gems being dropped. Putean al jugador quitándole posibilidades de crafteo, the philosophy and items rules drop. Ruthless on pathofexile.com slash ruthless. We plan to release this mode alongside the Forbidden Sanctum expansion in a week. In addition to being a character flag like Hardcore or Solo Self Found, it's also available as yeah, a lot of Apple Apple Apple. leagues. To be clear, the Forbidden Sanctum League content can be played in Ruthless with appropriately balanced Puedes rewards. Jugar Forbidden Sanctum en modo Ruthless. Ruthless is still very experimental during 320, and we won't be afraid to make mid-league balance changes to it during this experimental phase. Ruthless is not for everyone, but so far it has found a supportive and growing group of players who enjoy the additional challenge that it brings. If it sounds like something you're interested in, then try it out next time you're looking for a new way to enjoy Path of Exile. <laughs> Mierda, bro. This expansion also contains a number vale, of small quality of life improvements. Some examples are Divine Vessels can now be used by right-clicking them rather than taking them to Sin. Oh, On bien. the player Oy, over the life bar, the energy shield bar is split into a separate bar. You can now right-click an itemized Temple of Atsuatl to see its layout. Oy, and most rico. importantly, Beastcrafting recipes that add mods to flasks. Lo vas a aumentar todo, eh? Tranquilo, si algo nos queda. Uy, qué rico. Uy, qué rico. Ya se sabía, cabrón. No, te lo sabías tú. Yo sigo equivocando un montón de veces. Each tier contains a full face value and points plus zero to move my progress. Eso lo sabías tú, yo no lo sabía. These packs will only be available for the duration of the sanctum. Mira que te tienen al día. Can we leave the store? Ojalá, gracias por ese prime. As always, these microtransactions are entirely cosmetic and do not Buah, affect your character's mandanga, eh? Esto ya se ha terminado, lo que the character's actions. Wow, we have a lot of mandanga, eh? This is the presentation. And we have a lot of mandanga to comment. Oh, how beautiful! Estos son los paquetes que están vendiendo, que van a poner a la venta. Ramps up as you build a kill streak, building pressure and releasing it when your streak ends. Si uno bueno el juego juega tres días, las gemas y el árbol no cambia el viernes que viene. Hay algunas cosas que van a cambiar de bienes que vienen, entre ellas el árbol de Aldas The Delirious Hideout Decoration lets you summon Delirium gemas. Fog in your hideout at will, complete with strange voices and terrifying Hostia, qué apparitions. Feeling okay. ¿Ah? Aparece Delirio. <risa> Delirio en su hideout. Que se abre el personaje. Putos de Shishishi, ¿por qué hacen cosas tan bonitas? Set summons a hammer and anvil so that everyone nearby can watch you. Bonaudo, muchas gracias por ese Prime. ¿Quién es tu pasta? Ya. Me iban a sacar pasta para Exai 2. Sí. The ethereal fusing effect turns your item linking attempts into a spectator sport. If you manage to hit a six link, people watching it even send a congratulatory message. Ojo. Congratulaciones. Congratulations. 
Summoning the crow storm portal effect causes a murder of crows to erupt from the portal. The portal becomes dormant if you are too far away from it, causing the crows to take to the skies. Path of Exile 2 saldrá en un año. En junio tendremos un alfa. You fight and scours the souls of those you put to rest. The Gemling Pack series also has six exclusive microtransactions. Qué feo es el cabrón de. The beehive weapon effect lets the weapon play host to a swarm of angry bees, which erupt from the hive whenever you hit an enemy with the weapon. Están pegando con un panel. Hola. The hive to send out its best warriors. The Stampede Quicksilver Flask makes you the leader of your own personal rower herd. Activating the flask causes a host of ghostly rowers to charge alongside you. This is the Gemling Artificer Armor Set. It is inlaid with gems that match the gems you've socketed in your items. Crafting gems with gem cutters, brilliant orbs, or regrading lenses visualizes the process for all to see. This armor set also includes alternate gem level up effects. Prospero's ring blesses you with a constant shower of coins, and it helps you thank players you've traded with through a hearty fist bump. The consumer bone's head bounces alongside you and devours corpses in your wake, spitting out a tidy pile of bones. Finally, this pack allows you to reunite with Cadero Perandus, inviting him to your hideout as a vendor. In addition to buying items from you and using his connections to accept your divination cards. He'll provide commentary on your goods, equipment, and anything else he sees fit to judge you for. That might be a little too much to drink, even for me. Kadiro has hundreds of lines of voice acting. What? Oh, a mighty headhunter! I'm Una so que habla. impressed. Sí. Try to duck when the brain fragments splatter de everywhere. Se han corrido la traducción, eh? These new packs are available right now at pathofexile.com slash purchase. Purchases like these directly fund the ongoing development of Path of Exile 1 and 2, and we really appreciate your support. Meanwhile, the Knight and Rogue packs leave the store forever in one week, so now is your last chance to purchase them. Estos son los dos the paquetes Calandra que dejan. Edition of Kirik's Vault Pass is only available until the end of the Calandra League and will be replaced with a new set of unique items when the Forbidden Sanctum launches. Y también cierran la bóveda con los drops de la bóveda. We're hoping to film season 11 of Build of the Week once the Forbidden Sanctum comes out. If you want to submit your build for the season, share your build guide on the Calandra. Natural, muchísimas gracias por las 5 subs, compañero. Next up, we've got the Q&A with Ziggy D. Once that ends, we'll post the full patch notes for the Forbidden Sanctum. Over the next week, our community team will post the expansion vale, rewards, a... information on how to update your item filters, all new and changed gems, and information on how to prepare for launch. On launch weekend, we expect to release the new mystery box, and we'll follow up with the new Kirik's Vault Pass in the days after launch. Thanks for joining us and checking out the Forbidden Sanctum. We can't Muchas wait to join gracias. you in Raycast on December guapo. 9. We'll begin the Q&A shortly, so please get your questions ready in chat. Muchas gracias, Chris, guapo. Ya está, hasta aquí hemos llegado. Qué bonito. A ver, me encantaría. No vamos, a... pero me encantaría que respondiera porque es importante que respondiera cómo funciona la mecánica cuando somos dos. Bueno, no, en parte, simplemente en parte. Pero eh, abro yo mi Samton y luego abres tú el tuyo. Yo me imagino que lo abre uno y todos podrán entrar a ese. No, todos podemos entrar, entiendo. Pero se progresa con los mapas, ¿no? Como si fuera Harvest. O sea, que se... sí, como si fuera Harvest. Entiendo que se progresa que... O, o, o no se progresa... O sea, se progresa su rollo. Pasa de los mapas. ¿Qué es, es lo posible. que hace progresar el...? Yo lo, yo lo que entendí es que te quedas dentro hasta que se te acabe la esencia esta nueva. Y el Resolve. El Resolve. Sí, pero luego, ¿cómo reentras? ¿Cómo vuelves a hacerlo? En el siguiente mapa, imagino. En cada mapa tener que hacer un... Ya, pues entonces más les vale hacerse rápido, porque si no... Ya, no, no puedes 